We have studied the objects that roll without slipping up or down an incline. Let's say the object has a mass m, radius r, and the rotational inertia i. And we have to find the object's acceleration and the friction acting on the object. To find these, we have to draw the force diagram and write force equation and the torque equation. We have to write both equations because the same object rolling without slipping is doing both the translational motion and the rotational motion. In order for us to be able to see the torque acting on an object, we need to draw all the forces acting at the point of application. So the mg would be at the center of mass. And the normal force and the friction, they are contact forces, so they come from the contact point. So the normal force perpendicular to the incline and the friction, since there is no slipping, the friction is static friction, which is against the tendency to slide. Because of the mg sine theta acting on the object, the object has a tendency to slide down. So the friction goes up the incline. And we can do it for the object that's rolling down the incline. It will be the same, mg at the center of mass. Normal force acting on the point of uh, contact. So normal force and the friction. This one's rolling down the incline. It still has a tendency to slide it down because of the mg sine theta. So friction would also go up. So either rolling up or down the incline in both cases the object has a tendency to slide down and therefore the friction goes up. So it's the same thing, same force diagram for up or down the incline. To write the net force equals to ma, since the acceleration is going to be down the incline. So instead of mg going straight down, we're going to draw the mg sine theta and then we have friction. So the net force is the bigger one minus the smaller one, mg sine theta minus friction equals to ma. And then we have to write the torque equation. The net torque comes from the friction because both mg and normal force go through the axis. So they do not have lever arm. So friction is the only one that provides the torque. And so it's force times the lever arm. What is the lever arm for friction? It is R. So times R equals to I alpha. It's rolling without slipping. So alpha and A, they are related. Alpha can be replaced with A over R. Again, if we want to be able to stack these two together and add them so we can cancel the friction, we will have to divide by R on both sides first. Now we can add them. The R's cancel, and uh, when we add these two, those two will cancel also. So on this side, we are left with mg sine theta. On that side, we're left with the ma plus uh, i divided by r squared times a, so we can factor out the a, and over here I would have i divided by r squared. So we can use this equation to solve for the acceleration, and then plug it back in one of these two to solve for friction. Of course, sometimes the acceleration is given and you're looking for something else, but basically you have two equations and then you'll, there'll be two unknowns and you can use uh, the two equations to find uh, whichever two unknowns you have involved in here. Everything here is the same for rolling without slipping up or down the incline. So if something rolls without slipping up to a maximum height and then rolls without slipping back down, the entire trip has a constant acceleration found here going down the incline. Just like something that is tossed straight up to a maximum height and then falls back down. This entire trip has a constant acceleration, g. So for both cases, the upward trip and downward trip are symmetric. If it takes 3 seconds to go up, it will take 3 seconds to come back down. 
we can also have a rolling without slipping problem like this. A string is attached to the ceiling and then it's wrapped around this object. And then if you let go, this thing is going to go down and the, the string is going to unwind. If the string does not slip, then we have this object that's uh, rolling without slipping. If you draw the force diagram, you would have mg going down and uh, it's touching the string only. So you just have the tension going up. So we can do mg minus t equals to ma and then the tension is the one that gives us the torque. So everything will be just like this except for you have mg instead of mg sine theta and the tension instead of friction over there. Now let's say we have three objects. All uniform, all have the same mass and the same radius. They are a ring, a solid disk, a solid sphere. They all start from rest and roll without slipping down this incline. Rank from high to low, A, the speed at the bottom, B, the time it takes to, to go down, and C, the total kinetic energy at the bottom of the incline. For the final speed, we can use conservation of energy. They all start from up high, so they have mgy at the top of the incline. And then when they come down, they have no more mgy, but they have kinetic energy. Since uh, they all row without slipping, so they have both the one half mv squared and the one half i omega squared. They all have the same mass and the same radius, but they have different types of uh, mass distribution. So they have different rotational inertia. Because they start with the same amount of uh, mechanical energy, that means uh, the object that has the larger rotational inertia would have to spend a bigger fraction of the total mechanical energy on rotation, leaving a smaller fraction of the energy for the translational kinetic energy. Therefore, it would have a smaller V. The one that has the largest rotational inertia is the ring. So the ring is going to come down with the smallest speed. And then it's the solid disk. Because the solid disk has the same thickness throughout, while the solid sphere is thicker when it's closer to the rotational axle. So the solid sphere has the smallest rotational inertia, so the sphere has uh, the largest speed at the bottom, and then that's the disk in the middle. For part B, since uh, all of them are coming down at a constant acceleration motion, just they, that they have different acceleration, so the one that comes down the fastest would take the least time. So the sphere takes the least time, and then it's the disk. The ring would take the longest. For part C, this is the total kinetic energy at the bottom. And uh, for all three of those, uh, this equals to mgy, and they all start with the same mgy. So it's equal for all of them. When they roll down without slipping, there is friction acting on them. So why can we still have mechanical energy conservation? Because uh, the friction acting on them is static friction. There's no displacement for it. So this static friction does not do work. When something rolls without slipping, a point on the rim follows this path. The contact point is a turning point. The velocity is zero. So the work done by this static friction equals to friction times zero displacement. Friction does zero work, so no mechanical energy is lost to friction. Now let's look at another incline of the same angle and the same height, but this one is uh, frictionless. Suppose we have a block in the ring released from rest at the top. How would their speed at the bottom and the time they take to go down compare to those ones? If there is no friction, 
Both of these will just slide down the incline. Without friction to provide torque, the ring will not rotate at all. So for both of them, no energy is turned into one half i omega squared. All of the mgy is turned into one half mv squared. So they will attain the same speed at the bottom of the incline, and that they are faster than all three of those. They will arrive at the bottom in the same amount of time that is less than all three of those. And if they have the same mass as those three, they would have the same amount of total kinetic energy at the bottom of the incline as those three. Because without friction, no mechanical energy is lost to heat. So mgy equals to their total kinetic energy. It's just that for these two, there's only one half mv squared, no rotational kinetic energy.